All right, sergeant degree, uh, specifically large format interchangeable cores and how to create pinning charts for them. Uh, degree is kind of a catch-all. There's actually three systems involved in it, uh, DG1 or degree 1, DG2 or degree 2, and DG3 or degree 3. Um, article kind of goes over all the nuances between them, um, but basically DG1's conical pins, uh, DG2 and DG3 use angled bottom pins. So the, as it relates to a pinning chart, that's only the only the main differences between them, so to speak. Um, same formula, same math, they all pin up in the same way. Um, so what I'm going to show you today is obviously going to be a DG2 or DG3 because I've got angles, but the same approach, formulas, math, everything um, can be used for DG1 if that's what you've got. Um, this is very similar to the 6300 from Sargent. So if you do any sort of 6300 work, a lot of what you're going to see today is, is the same. So it'll kind of carry over, so to speak. And if you've already got experience in that, this is going to be um, very easy for you because uh, you're just changing a few of the numbers and formulas and, and all of that. Um, just as with all my videos where I show you how to create these painting charts in seconds, and I know it's a little bit longer than that because I'm kind of going over in all the nuances, but um, I always start out by determining the master and bottom pin first. And that's what I'm going to do here. But obviously, since we have angles, we need to uh, transpose those up here as well so that when you're grabbing for the bottom pin, you're grabbing not only for the right depth, but for the right angle. So we've included um, two sections for each box of the bottom pin. Number one, to put your uh, numerical length of the bottom pin as well as the angle. Now, with Sergeant Degree, yes, it is Medico, but we're using Medico original angles and positions. So there are no fore and aft cuts as with a, a biaxial or an M3. In other words, there can only be one angled position. So we're always going to have one angle per chamber. You don't have to worry about double cuts or anything like that. Um, so very simply, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just transpose these angles up here. Before I do that, you can obviously see that I've got the angles in a different color than um, the numerical length. And that's something we do internally. And uh, if you do any sort of medical work or eventually degree work, I would suggest you do the same. And the reason for that is when your angles and your numbers are a different color, they kind of stand out from each other. So when you're originating a key, uh, it's just easier for you to notice whatever you're looking for at that moment and kind of helps you speed along the process. So uh, we're going to transpose the angles. Obviously, we've got right, right, left, 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 center. So right, right, left, left, left. And on degree large format, you don't use an angled pin in the sixth chamber. There's not enough physical space for that indicator tab to be milled into the core. Uh, so we can just leave that um, without an angle because we're going to have to use a conical bottom pin in that or a, a DG1 bottom pin. Um, and then just as with all my other videos, like I said, I like to start with bottom and master pins first because they always key up in a conventional manner. So it's very easy to uh, knock those out of the way. So first chamber, one and three are our operating cuts one for the top master, three for the change. So obviously the shallower of the two cuts determines the bottom pin, the difference is what the master pin is. So we've got a one bottom pin, one, three, difference is two. Next one, um, one bottom pin, difference between one and five is four. And then two and four, two bottom pin, difference between them is two, three and six, three bottom pin, difference between them is three, one and three, again, one bottom pin, difference between them is two, and then two and five, it's going to be a two bottom pin and a three master pin. And so just as with the 6300, you've got non-controlled and controlled chambers. Non-controlled chambers for degree large format, just as with the 6300, are one, two, 
five and six is why I've got those build up pin boxes blocked off so that you don't have any sort of confusion when building these pin and charts that you think you should have a build up pin in those chambers. And that's because just as with a 6300, and it feels like I'm repeating myself here, but I'm just kind of trying to stress the point, just as with a 6300, your control lug is only going to be in the third and fourth position. So that's the only two chambers we're going to have to worry about build up pin math or anything like that. And again, just as with the 6300, um, your Non-control chambers have a uniform stack height that's different from the control chambers. Uh, for degree, non-control chambers, the stack height has to be 10. Okay, so if we know that these three numbers, the top pin, master pin, bottom pin, have to equal 10, and we know two of the three numbers, we can simply add the two known numbers and subtract them from 10 to figure out our unknown number, in this case, the top pin. So if we've got to get to 10, and our bottom and master pin equal three, 10 minus three is seven. Next chamber, bottom and master equal five, 10 minus five, five. Then we'll skip over the control chambers. Uh, bottom and master pin in chamber number five equal three, 10 minus three, seven. And for the last one, three plus two equals five, 10 minus five is five. So, now all that's left is to focus on the control chambers. Um, just as I did with the 6300, I don't like to do the build up pin formula first um, because then you've got parentheses and plug total and it's just more convoluted and complicated than it really has to be. I'm gonna attack for the top pin first. Um, just as with uh, small format A2, uh, the 6300 itself, there's a formula that allows you to determine the top pin just by using the um, control cut. And we've got our control cut fittings down here. For degree, the formula for the top pin and control chambers is seven minus the control cut. So in other words, seven minus this five cut will give us the top pin in that chamber. Uh, in this case, seven minus five is two. So that is our top pin for the third chamber. And then moving to the fourth chamber, the fourth cut on the key, seven minus four is three. So we've got three of the four figured out. And just as we did with the non-control chambers, we've got to figure out the unknown. Well, we know that it has to get to 13. That's the uniform stack height of the control chambers. So, 2 plus 2 plus 2 is 6. 13 minus 6, 7. And then 3 plus 3 plus 3 is 9. 13 minus 9 is 4. And it's that simple. Um, normally when I do these videos, I always do a first, uh, you know, just a change key by itself. And then I show a second example with a master key. But this is so similar to the 6300 that it's kind of unnecessary. If you want to see another example uh, with obviously different numbers and formulas, you can watch the 6300 video, but they are so similar that uh, it, I think it's only going to take one video or one example to get the point across. And I'll include in the description a link to an article that covers a lot more than what I did today. This video is obviously just to show you how to create a, a pinning chart for it, but that article will have more information. It'll have links to this uh, pinning chart as well as a pinning chart for conventional cylinders because this degree platform, you know, they've got it mortise, rim, key and lever, key and knob, large format, obviously. Um, so you would have more use than just this pinning chart. Uh, we've also got uh, links to the key bidding specifications for all three platforms or subsystems as well as a um, link to the technical manual that Sargent puts out for these. Um, but like I said, this is a relatively new platform, so to speak. Um, we service a few here. And as I've been out in the field, I've noticed uh, a lot of new construction, especially high rises are starting to use these in the Atlanta area. So that's kind of cool to see. Um, don't know anybody else in town that, that works on them, but does require its own dedicated pin kit. Um, if you've got an ITL, if you've got an HPC, you know, you can 
originate these keys. Um, so it's it's pretty pretty standard. Um, just about the only thing you're going to need is that pin kit, but article covers that. The only purpose of this video was to create the, the pinning chart and show you how I do it. Um, so that's that. Thanks.